y'all, hey, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we got to get into this last episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's the season finale. Leave it to them to put everything in the last episode, but let's just get into it. Before we do, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. So the episode opens up with production talking to Drew in the confessional, and they're saying that it feels like this season... There's been something that either you or Ralph or the both of y'all ain't telling us. And they cut straight into a compilation of flashbacks of all these instances of issues that Ralph and Drew have had with each other. Drew is sitting there just lying and holding this bullshit together about, well, no, we're the best we've ever been. So then we cut to Candy and Todd bonding over working on their movie together. Candy asks, how do you like us producing movies together? And Todd Yawned and hesitated before he lied and said, yeah, I like it. Candy said, well, damn, you had to think that hard about it? No, I don't think he had to think that hard about it. I think he's thinking that hard about why do you be asking me this like you don't know the answer. You know this man don't like working with you. Cut the bullshit and cut the check. So then we see Sonya going to Dr. Jackie for her ultrasound. Ross is not able to make it, so she takes her sister wife, Marlo. Marlo called herself recording the appointment for Ross to watch later. She barely got any damn footage. She got a picture of the screen, picture her damn self. Sonya says she is making it a priority to celebrate her second pregnancy as much as her first because she's trying to avoid creating the dynamic that her parents created with her and her sister. She said because her parents always treated her like she was the star, it made her sister feel like she was always in her shadows. And she doesn't want to create that with her children, so she's trying to celebrate baby two from day one. So then we cut over to Drew and Ralph at home. They're catching up with each other because apparently they have not been seeing each other because of their schedules. Ralph said he's been busy and he's been working. Drew said, well, yeah, me too. Ralph said, you ain't been working. You've been doing sex scenes. That's what you've been doing. She said it is a lot more than that. And it's a whole lot of work. And he said, well, that's a whole lot of the reason he moved out of the damn bedroom. I, I said, what? He moved out of the bedroom because she'll come home from work at two and three and four o'clock in the morning. And when she comes and gets in the bed, it wakes him up and he's up for hours. So he decided to move out of the bedroom. She said, well, when are you moving back? He said, I don't know. I guess whenever I can get some damn stability around this bitch. I don't know. How so what in the married but filing separate is going on here? Now, I assume that was an acceptable response for Drew because she changed the subject and went right into talking about, yeah, we got to talking about your cousin Courtney and her calling me a bitch. So, so you gonna skip over y'all as roommates now? So Drew said that when the conversation came up and Monietta showed her the clip, she had Monietta send her the clip so that she could send the clip to Ralph. Ralph said, yeah, I saw the clip you sent me. How does that make you feel? She said, how does that make you feel? I sent it to you for you because that's your cousin. How does it make you feel? He said, I mean, I've seen Kenya call you a bitch. I've seen Marlo call you a bitch and y'all cool. So, I mean, what's the issue? I don't know. The Drew said, but it's about more than the word bitch. It's about you don't know this lady. You just met her. And this is who she is behind our backs. Well, uh, number one, you knew that before y'all was around here calling her cousin Courtney and all this bullshit pushing her in our face. But Ralph said, what do you mean behind our backs? Like, what did she say that's offensive to me? If I don't give a damn about my wife was a person, it would be Ralph. Drew said, if I don't rock with somebody, you don't rock with somebody. Ralph said, yeah, if we got a reason to not rock with them. She said, so her calling me a bitch is not reason enough to not rock with her. I think the problem is the clip that you sent him is insufficient evidence because she wasn't talking about you. She did use the word bitch, which she said she doesn't use, but when she used the word bitch, she was talking about Sonya. And if you sent that to that man and you allowed him to watch it and discern for himself what happened in that video, I think he can tell you might have been the topic of conversation, but not the target of the term. Drew said the confessional, Ralph said, fuck your feelings. She said the problem for her is not being able to share how she feels and have that valued and be heard in her relationship. Her and Ralph are a mess because listen, while yeah, that is true. Part of the problem is also that you don't tell the truth. And I think Ralph is aware of that and chooses to not be subject to your manipulative tactics. If you are not telling the truth, and I know you not telling the truth, and you trying to get me to beef with somebody based on you not telling the truth, I'm not doing that dumb shit. So I get that reaction from him. But I also get Drew feeling like, well, my husband don't ever have my back because your husband does not have your back. Drew decided she was done with the conversation. She said, because this is a not the reaction or response I expected from my husband. 
Ralph said, Kenya, Marlo, and Candy done called you a bitch and ain't no problem. So what you want me to do, go attack all of them? I said, well, damn. The next song Drew sang needs to be on my own because I'll be damned. Part of what I think is going on with Drew and Ralph is they're operating in different ends of the have my back in public and correct me in private thing. Because Drew's thing is she wants Ralph to have her back in public at all costs, no matter what. You are supposed to defend me against these people. I don't care what's going on. Ralph's issue is I'm going to correct you in private and I ain't going to have your back in public if I don't believe in that shit. And I'm going to tell you that in private and in public. And I don't think either one of them really gets the concept. So Drew goes stomping out the room. She ends up in the kitchen where her sister, her assistant, her chef, this whole damn royal staff is. Well, Ralph follows her out and he puts his arm around her shoulder and are you okay? Drew say, I'm tired. I ain't got time for this bullshit today. So Drew drags her sister into the argument. She starts explaining the whole situation about remember when we were at the retreat and Courtney was saying she don't use the word bitch. Drew's sister with the shit. She said, yeah, I remember. She looked me right in my face and said she don't use that word. So what's up? What she said? Ralph said, well, Allison, you've called Drew a bitch before. I mean, you on the list. So what the f is the issue? It happens. Drew's sister said, look here, I don't give a damn if she called her a banana. She told you she don't like it and that's all that matters. Drew is just overwhelmed by the drama. She got up. She said, I'm going to take a shower. Y'all, please take my mic off. Ralph goes following her. I'm like, what, what you crying for? She said, because I cannot believe you just embarrassed me like that. Drew told Ralph, you could have just not said anything. I can't believe you just said that. You know, I'm tired. I've been working all the time. I just can't deal. Allison goes stomping off crying behind her asking Ralph, why would you do this? Why did you start this? He's standing there just looking stupid and we cut to the next scene. Let me tell you something. When I look at most of these marriages, the only thing I can think is they had to get married to have somebody to split the damn bills with because you cannot tell me. You married this kind of individual thinking he was going to pray, protect, profess, and provide. You could not think that. If every man for himself were a marriage, it would be this one. Because now while Drew is dramatic and full of shit and she be making stuff up a lot of the damn times, at the end of the day, that is your husband. And you do expect your husband to have some level of protection over you. Even if that protection is to say, listen, you tripping. I don't think you properly interpreted what happened in this video. And I think you're twisting it because you don't like her and you want a reason to be mad with her. Now, I will have a conversation with her and I'll tell her that if she did refer to you as a bitch, I don't think that's appropriate. You don't like it. It makes you uncomfortable. But I do need you to know you ain't right about this. As far as I'm concerned, that's all it takes. But this man basically told you, kiss my ass, you on your own. You is a bitch. That's how it comes off. Like, I agree with him. What you want me to do? So then we move on and we see Sheree and her oldest daughter riding around and they're catching up. Sheree is talking about how she's changed her diet and her workouts and she's doing everything in her power to avoid having surgery for her fibroids. Well, she and her daughter are talking about about avoiding stress and things of that nature. Sheree said she has never been a stressor. She said even when it comes to bill collectors, she said when they call me, I tell them I'll call y'all when I get it. Why well, I look like stressing about some money I ain't got. She thought I'm gonna have wrinkles on top of bills. I'll be damned. So then they caught up about the sip and see. Sheree asked her daughter what she thought about it. She said she thought it was everything and she also thought it was hilarious. She said the fact that you had your ex-husband and your new boo thing in the same place, in the same color, in the same family pictures, girl, you was funny. So Sheree brought up the mystery lady that Bob had kept calling to come into the pictures. Sheree's daughter said, yeah, I saw that. Sheree said, did you know who that was? She said, yeah. She said, how you know her? She said, because I met her at a family dinner one time at Bob's mom's house. She said, well, was she introduced to you as a daughter at that time? She said, yeah. Sheree said, so why you ain't never told me? She said, because I thought you knew shit. Sheree said her daughter, Tiara, and Bob are very close. So it's not necessarily weird that she would know before her about this outside daughter because she actually spends time with Bob, whereas Sheree does not. Sheree said, now, if he knew about the daughter all along, then she thinks that's pretty messed up that he never told her. But she does think it makes sense that her kids knew about it before 
course she knew about it because of their relationship with him. Now I ain't trying to start no shit. Now I ain't trying to be messy, but maybe the reason the daughter never said nothing is because remember when Sheree came on this show, she wasn't claiming this child. I guess she said, well, Bob got one. He ain't claiming two. Surprise. Her daughter, Tierra said, I thought you already knew all that. She said, I ain't know none of that shit. I never knew he had some extra child. Sheree brought up to her daughter that Bob told the ladies that he used to sneak and have all the kids around each other. Her daughter looked confused as hell. She said, now that, I don't know nothing about it. All that is some bullshit. I don't know nothing about him bringing her around when we were young because I thought the girl popped up out of nowhere. She said, I thought it was a child he found out about that he never knew about or she got adopted and found her real parents. Like she, I thought she came up out of nowhere. I don't know nothing about nobody playing together when they was young. Now he lying. Sheree says she does not blame her kids for not telling her about this outside child. She said, because that was not their responsibility. That's Bob's responsibility. And the fact that he not only hid it, but make some joke or tell some lie about having these kids play together in secret speaks to his character more than anything. So then we cut over to Kenya's house where she is at home with Brooklyn and her dad who is visiting. She says she and her dad have had a rocky relationship over the years, but they're working on it. And it looked like Brooklyn might be struggling with him a little bit too. Her granddaddy comes sit down next to her. She said, I want my mommy to sit next to me. Kenya said, don't do my daddy like that. Don't do that. Brooklyn said, look, I know this your daddy, but I don't know him. I'm shy. Kenya said, you ain't that shy. Don't be talking about my daddy like that. So Kenya's dad asked, well, what's going on in your world talking to Kenya? Kenya said, well... I was gonna share with you something that Brooklyn and I have been discussing. Brooklyn look at her like, oh, hold on, what kind of bullshit you dragging me into? Kenya said she and Brooklyn have been talking about growing their family. I said, not you family planning with a damn toddler. Kenya daddy said, what the hell is you talking about? You mean you gonna adopt a child? She said, no, I have embryos. He said, oh my God. Didn't you damn near die the last time? She said, yeah, but they have this thing called surrogates. He said, oh yeah. So she explained to him what surrogacy is and that Candy and a few other people she knows have done it. And he said, well now that sounds a little more feasible. That sounds like it make a little more sense to me. So nobody's going to tell her she's signing up for a second tour of hell by having another baby with this man. Ain't nobody going to tell her. She said the one thing she has yet to do is discuss the issue with Mark and see what Mark thinks about it. Her dad asked, well, do you think he's going to be against it? She said, well, ultimately, it really does not matter what he thinks. Because the way that they did the paperwork is apparently they have to choose one person or the other to own the embryos in the event that they should split up and Kenya is the owner. Well, if that's the case and it really don't matter what he thinks, why are you trying to involve him? Kenya says she's afraid to talk to him about it because she's not sure what his reaction might be, that, you know, he might try to file an injunction and try to stop her or, but if you own them, then what do you, what? Could he possibly try to include this child in their legal case? She said right now she doesn't have any answers, so she's just gonna keep her mouth shut. Well, you just gave him some damn good ideas. Personally, I wouldn't want to have a baby with a person who has already demonstrated they don't want the baby we already got together. If he don't want nothing to do with none of that shit, why would I repeat the process with him? Now, if you own these embryos outright and you don't need his input, his participation, his support, you don't care whether the child has a relationship with him and you got a plan for that, then that's your business and you move forward as you see fit. But personally, I just do not understand wanting to continue to procreate with somebody who has shown you what they're going to do. So then we move on to a scene of Marlo at La Archive and they could have kept this shit. Marlo is letting us know that La Archive is doing amazing. She's head of wardrobe for Tammy Roman. She has worked on set with Cynthia on a movie. And then we see Scott Lee Stokely, whatever the damn man name is, come in. And he just came back from LA and oh my God, I missed you so much. And they're hugging and so happy to see each other. And I said, this is some fake shit here. How Marlo went from, we ain't never seen a single soul Marlo has dated in a decade to Marlo getting a peach. And then Marlo being randomly introduced to this random guy and all of a sudden he's in every other scene with her. 
please play with somebody else. If this is set up to prove that she don't get her checks or her sex from rich white men, we don't give a damn. So production asked Marlo, who is this man to you? Like, what is we supposed to put on his title when we put him on the screen? Is this your boyfriend? She said, no, he's my friend that I'm dating and getting to know. He's my friend boy. If you don't stay the hell from Ralph Martell. Marlo said she's not ready for Scott Lee to meet her nephews, but he can meet her baby La Archive, girl. So they wrap up this manufactured scene with Marlo getting a text from Candy about it's a wrap. She and Todd have finished filming their movie and they're going to have a wrap party that they're inviting her to. So she asked Scott Lee, how does your schedule look for tomorrow? Oh, I'm available, of course. So he's going to go with her to this party, I guess. So then we move on and we see Drew and Ralph go to see Dr. Ken because they need help. Drew said she feels like it's a big deal that they're going to Dr. Ken, period, because Ralph has been absent from the process. He said, now, I'm going to counseling with you, but I've been working on myself. He said, just look at all the changes I've made. Drew said, what changes? He said, well, I left the room. Now, I took him to be talking about leaving during an argument, but apparently he's talking about leaving their bedroom. Drew explains to Dr. Ken that, yeah, he moved out of our bedroom and I, I don't know what's going on. Ralph said, well, yeah, me moving out of the bedroom is just about me getting to a place where I'm comfortable. So Dr. Ken asked Drew, how does it make her feel that Ralph has moved out of the bedroom? She said, alone. He asked Ralph how he felt. Ralph said liberated. What bit more? Dr. Ken said in the time that he has known Drew and Ralph, the one determination that he has been able to make is that they do love each other, but they are also very disconnected. Drew said him moving out of our bedroom is a change he didn't even discuss with me. And it was a major change. It was big enough that our kids even noticed because they're asking about him sleeping in a separate room. He said, that's a lie. She said, that's not a damn lie. She said their older child sent her a text message and asked, why is dad in the other room? She pulled up her phone and proved it to him since you want to call me all kind of damn lies. Drew went on to say she tried to cover for Ralph and whatever they have going on by telling the kids that he's sleeping in the guest room because she's getting home from work so late and he has to get up in the morning, but everything will be back to normal once she finishes filming this movie. So Ralph takes absolutely no accountability for the structure of their family or the falling apart of the family and that the children notice. He said... The fact that the kids notice is something that Drew created because it's all about how you explain it to them. She said, what the f is you talking about? I just read to you what I explained to them. I didn't tell them shit. So Ralph goes off on a tangent of nonsense. He's explaining that him moving out of the room basically comes down to him doing what makes him happy. That he's at a point in his life where he wants to do what makes him happy because he deserves that. He wants to be able to smell the roses and enjoy the fruits of his labor. And he has not had that up to this point. He says, so what he's doing is not just about him. It's also about Drew. He's doing this so that he can be happy and so that she can be happy. He said, and it's worked out because he and Drew are different people. She like the heat on 82. He like it closer to 72. So they need these 10 degrees of separation. Drew and Dr. Ken look confused as hell. He told Drew, I don't know why you making these faces. She said, because it don't make no damn sense. He said, yes, it does. Look at what I did. I created a solution for both of us. Now she has what she wants and I have what I want. What? So you just wanted to be roommates. You just wanted somebody to split bills and kids with and shit. Ralph said in the confessional that him sleeping in the other room allows him to get the sleep that he needs. Drew said, that's a damn lie. She said, because I have long wrapped this movie and this motherfucker ain't come back in the room. I'm willing to turn the heat down and he still won't come back in the room. Let me tell you something. This is where your self-esteem goes to die, okay? When you are with a person who continually goes out of their way to tell you how wrong you are for them and you are spending all your time, money, energy, everything you got to prove to the wrong person that you're the right one, you will kill your self-esteem in the process. Ralph said, well, Dr. Ken, I don't know what she complaining about because her best friend and her best friend's husband sleep in separate rooms. They've been married longer than us. They've been living in separate bedrooms longer than us and they live in their best lives. Drew said them people just filed for divorce. What the fuck is you talking about? Ralph said, well, who hasn't filed for a divorce? Dr. Ken looked like I don't get paid enough for this bullshit. Dr. Ken said, yeah, based on what I just observed, I would say we definitely need that marriage counselor. If by marriage counselor, you mean divorce attorney, then yeah, we absolutely do. Dr. Ken was sick of the bullshit. He said, you know what, Ralph, let, let me ask you what's really on my mind. He said, is there somebody else you want to be with? Is there somebody else that you really want to connect with? Just go ahead and tell us the truth now. Shit, you tell us anything else on here. Well, 
well, you know Ralph ain't answering that. Sh so we move on and we see everybody getting ready for Candy and Todd's party. Well, Sheree is at home getting ready and her daughter is trying to help her. She said, I know your closet inside now. She said, yeah, because you always in my sh taking my sh well, her daughter starts pulling out pieces and she said, oh, where you get this little purse from? This is cute. Sheree said, Martel bought that for me. Her daughter said, oh, Martel has good taste. Surprisingly, when I tell you I hollered, oh my God, Callie reads the motherfuckers down. I don't know why Sheree don't go talk to her child before she starts with these men because Callie sees them and reads them. So as they're preparing for the party, Drew and Ralph go to the sound check together. Now he is all excited and ooh, look at your name on the star and ooh, you're in the movie. And Drew said, now the thing that be throwing me for a loop is Ralph knows when to show up and play the part of the supportive husband. So I'm trying to figure out who is my husband for real. Number one, you basically telling us you married to a stranger. Number two, what it is, is he knows how to identify opportunities. He is an opportunist and he is riding your coattails. So anytime that you are in a room where you are networking, he is networking. He is going to benefit from everything that you are and everything that you do. That is the only reason he is around and has been around. That's why he knows exactly when, where, and how to show up. So we see Candy and Todd's party get started. We see everybody arriving at the party. And and the one question I had is how come the surrogate is there following Shamia around? Now, maybe I just don't understand how the whole surrogacy thing works. And maybe this is like that movie Baby Mama in real life where you and the surrogate actually hang out and y'all are friends and shit. But, but are there no boundaries with this? So all the ladies are running into each other at the party. Drew comes out and she's greeting people and everybody's all excited about the leading lady. Well, Courtney is there and she's hugging the ladies and saying hi. She reaches over to hug Drew's sister and she's, mm -mm, mm -mm. she said, okay, my bad. She said, yeah, it is your bad. So as Courtney is standing there talking to the rest of the group, Drew's sister is standing right next to her and said, yeah, when she's done being fake, I'm going to talk to her about, excuse, what? Courtney said, well, let's go off to the side and have a conversation so that we don't ruin their moment since you want to talk so damn bad. Come on. So Allison is airing her grievance to Courtney and she's saying, you told me you never called my sister a bitch. You looked me right in my face and said it. And I don't like when people look me in my face and lie. Courtney said, but I didn't lie to you. Did y'all look at the damn video? So Drew joins the conversation. Allison is explaining that she says she never called you a bitch. Courtney is addressing her saying that bitch in the clip. And Drew said, well, who were are you referencing though? Courtney said, you, you. Now we all know she wasn't, but I guess at this point, it's, what you gonna do about it? Drew is in the confessional. Uh, I'm just confused. I'm flabbergasted. Courtney said, I think she is confused. And the only reason I'm apologizing is to shut her the hell up because this is some dumb shit. Drew said, well, don't ever call me a bitch again because I didn't deserve that. Courtney turned to Drew's sister and said, have you ever called her a bitch? Allison said, you're only saying that because Ralph told you that. Well, the point is to get the hell out of my face your sanctimonious selective outrage. So Drew and Courtney are going back and forth. Courtney is waving her hand. Can you step between them? She said, because these hands are a problem. Girl, can you just please go sit down? So Sheree and Marlo show up fashionably late, but just in time to see the actual trailer. They introduce and play the trailer for the movie it does look like it was well produced, well executed. They force a Mama Joy scene on us where Candy is off in a corner asking her mama, you think people gonna come out and see it or stream it? She said, I hope so. Candy is talking about they've not done the family counseling, but her mom has been going to counseling. Her and Todd are getting along better. Girl, we don't give a damn. So they wrap up this rap party with Drew giving a performance of her song. Candy says she is happy to have wrapped this movie. She ain't got to worry about nobody laying it low and spreading it wide in her bed no more. They show us in her season wrap up that she and Todd were invited to the Tonys. She did not win the award, but she is still looking to be an EGOT. They are producing a revival of The Wiz and their movie The Past has been completed and is available for streaming on Peacock. They showed us Sheree's season wrap up. She ain't got shit going on. They had the nerve to put, despite the rumors, she and Martell are committed to saying that they're friends. If y'all don't get out of mother freeze. And while her many attempts 
to heal the group failed, she was able to heal her fibroids. Well, congratulations. Then they go to Marlo to show us her season wrap up. She all hugged up with Scott Lee at the party and you can tell this is a damn performance because this fool can't stop looking in the damn camera. Marlo just, she said she and Scott Lee have been dating for two months and it's just been amazing. She doesn't even think it can get any better unless he proposes. And they put in her season wrap up that although Marlo has not expunged Scott Lee from her life, she's continuing to work to expunge her criminal record. They said the only doors she's breaking down these days are the doors of systemic biases against foster children. I said, not y'all trying to make Marlo out to be Fanny the foster fairy. This is some bullshit. So then we see Kenya's wrap up and they are literally showing her having a soft opening of her hair salon as a background moment to how they're closing the season. What the f Now, Kenya said in her interview with Carlos that her whole process for building and opening the salon was completely cut out of production. And I do not understand why. Why the hell was this lady actually building the salon? Because you know, I thought since then, she ain't doing shit. But she's actually building a whole business from the ground up. And y'all show us half a clip of a soft opening of that shit. So essentially she don't have a storyline unless some man is dragging her. That's the way production sees it. And they captioned her season wrap up by saying Kenya is continuing to grow her family of hair products. And the world's longest divorce just got even longer since Mark has moved to hold Kenya in contempt of court. They showed us that they wrapped filming on January 28th. Well, remember when they were talking to Drew at the very beginning of the episode and they were asking about what is she not telling them about what's been going on between her and Ralph? That was from March 3rd, which was over a month after they had finished filming. They resumed filming on March 1st because Drew had filed for divorce. Now, you know Marlo don't mind talking people business, so they got her in the house sitting at the computer talking to her damn self about what the hell they got going on. This said they moving on with their life and they trying to find new direction. What direction y'all going in? Now, Kenya's in the confessional single. That's so sad. Sonya's on the phone talking to her husband about, oh my God, I can't take it. I just can't believe this is happening. And he, yeah, it's terrible. Marlo got her ass on the phone and called Sheree. Girl, you see this shit? Sheree said, hell no, girl, what happened? She said, I don't know who filed or say he filed, she filed. They filed an hour apart. They was chasing each other and racing to the courthouse child. I don't know. Marlo let it be known that the streets are talking and the streets said that Drew is involved with Ty, the female basketball player that is Mimi from Love and Hip Hop's ex. Child, it's a mess. Now, you know Monietta carry information wrong, but she is in the confessional saying that she had a conversation with Drew. And Drew said to her that if me and my husband don't work out, I'm going to go see what's up with my crush. She said, who is your crush? She said, Ty. Candy said the rumor mills say that Drew and Ty hooked up. So then we cut over to Sonya and Sonya had a very heartbreaking update. We saw her go to Dr. Jackie and confirm that she was five weeks and five days pregnant. She said, well, when she went back for her seven week checkup, Dr. Jackie informed her that the baby was not growing and it was no longer a viable pregnancy. They scheduled her DNC around a trip that she had scheduled, but before she could get back for the DNC, she went through what she said was an extremely traumatic miscarriage. This scene was so, so hard for me to watch. She said she lost a lot of blood. She almost died. She was in New York by herself. When she came back, she said the hardest part of it was having to tell her son because her son was so excited about having a little sister and he kept putting his hand on her stomach every night and would pray for them to have a healthy baby and let it be a little girl. She said, and when she came back from New York and her son put his hand on her stomach to say his little prayer, it just broke her down. She said she and Ross had agreed to not tell their son what was going on, she said, but she couldn't take lying to him. So she told him, and when she told him that she lost the baby, he just broke down. That thing about broke my damn heart. Her mom said, you know, we've been telling you to slow down for a long time. And I'm not saying that this has anything to do with you not slowing down, but maybe this is a sign that now it is time to slow down. So we see her season wrap up and her season wrap up is that her family has finally moved out of her house, but they're only 10 minutes away. And she and Ross continued to work on growing their family and they are pregnant again. I'm so grateful that they had that update because I, when I tell you 
watching the scene by rip my heart out my chest. It just, oh my God. So we see Drew going in to do her interview filming after all of the news has broken to the public. And we see some unlikely people call to support her. Kenya calls and lets her know that she knows exactly what she's going through. And if she ever needs anybody to talk to, do not hesitate to reach out to her. Sheree had just wrapped up filming her confessional interviews. And so she went in and checked on Drew and told her, you know, I know what it's like to go through a public divorce. So I'm here if you need anything. Now, while Sheree is checking on Drew and asking her, was your mom able to come check on you? Drew said, no, because my mom is with my dad and her dad's condition has declined. He's not eating or sleeping, so she has to stay with him. And Sheree said, well, the same thing happened with my dad. He actually just passed away like two days ago. Drew said, girl, what? And Sheree just broke down. She broke down crying. She said, I'm not here to talk about that. Like... I don't even know what to say. I really don't even know what to say. These damn updates are just, I mean, heart-wrenching. So then we see both Ralph and Drew be seated for their independent interviews. Drew sits down for her interview and she immediately starts crying. She said what she was thinking about is that the last time she was there, she was there with Ralph and they were good. But the truth is y'all weren't good. Y'all were good at pretending that's what y'all were doing. Drew said that a lot has gone on in their marriage, that she feels like she lost her voice in their marriage, and she has put up with a lot of things that no woman should put up with. Ralph is in his confessional saying that he's the one that asked for the divorce. He said they were in a pretty big argument. He said he wanted a divorce. Production asked, well, what was the argument about? He said, hold on, let me ask my lawyer if I can tell y'all that. He called the lawyer, the lawyer said, you will shut your ass up. So they turn around and ask Drew, what happened that day? What made you file? She said, hold on, let me call my lawyer. Just everybody shut the hell up. Production told Ralph, well, we saw in the paperwork that Drew claims there was infidelity on your part. He said, we'll be responding to that in court. So they asked, well, did you ever move back into the bedroom? Ralph said, yes, I moved back when the movie was done. Drew said, no. So they're asking Drew, what does she think her life is going to look like without Ralph in it? And she's very tearful and this is too new. It's too fresh. I can't even imagine that. They decide they're going to wrap filming there. She picks up her phone. She says, I got 27 messages. Well, it's the reason why. They said that now she started her interview at six o'clock. By eight o'clock that night, Mimi was on the internet posting a story that supposedly Drew and Ty, her ex, were involved. Just, they said Mimi posted the story at eight o'clock by 801, which was viral. So Drew is in the confessional in shock looking at these damn messages on her phone. So they asked Ralph about Drew and Ty's relationship. Ralph said Drew and Ty are friends. That's as far as I can say about it, I can't really talk about the situation. Just okay then. Let me find out he was in cahoots with Mimi to get this story in the streets. So all of a sudden we see Courtney big head in the confessional about, well, you know, I had heard that Drew was a good time and that, you know, she likes girls and she likes to have fun. I mean, it's no secret. So I asked Ralph about it. I said, not the girl who claims she's a professional crisis manager going to her cousin to start about what his wife doing. Meanwhile, Drew is in the confessional in utter shock. You mean to tell me this shit is everywhere? She starts trying to do her damage control. She looks over at production. She said, did you see this story that's going viral? They said, yeah, we did. She said, it's such a low reach. No, it's not. Production so fucking messy. They asking Courtney in the confessional, what do you know about Drew and her girlfriend? I said, not her damn girlfriend. Courtney said, I know she visits her. They said, where does she visit her? In Texas. Just that, that damn. I don't know if Courtney is a crisis manager or a crisis manufacturer. What the hell is you doing? She said Ralph has all the discovery. They said, what you mean? She mean the evidence. She said he got all the evidence and I think he feels pretty strongly about the evidence that he has. And then they got Courtney on camera saying she got pictures of Drew and Ty and her phone. She just wasn't going to say that on camera. I guess she said you done picked a fight with the wrong one. Child, Courtney said now we see why she wanted him to adopt that child so bad. She said, yeah, you adopt this baby so I can go be in my gay relationship and you can pay all the bills. That's what that was about. Just, oh my God. So production asked Drew, well, who is this person, this Ty? She said, well, she's a former WNBA player and I met her on set of Candy's movie. Drew said she was my co-star's friend. They said, you mean... The person who was playing your romantic partner? She said yes. So let me find out that you was actually living out your fantasies that you were acting out in Candy's movie and you doing it with your co-star's 
friend that I hope ain't your co-star's woman. Production asked, well, is there any truth to what the blogs have been saying? She said, I don't know because I don't know what they're saying. I just saw it sitting here. Here we go with the bullshit. So they asked Drew, well, have you ever heard this rumor before? She said, yeah, from Ralph. They said, so you think Ralph leaked this to the press? She said, pretty much. She said, Ralph started to conjure up all kinds of things that he believes she might have been doing when this whole divorce came up. She said, this was just one of the many accusations. So in her season wrap up, they said that Ralph has apologized for his part in the disintegration of their marriage, not to Drew, but to People Magazine. Just, and they also continue to cohabitate and co-parent their children. Okay. And they wrap this episode with Drew breaking down crying over her whole life falling apart all over the internet and in front of everybody's faces. Now, Drew fancies herself an amazing actress, so I don't know if this is really going down or if this is some acting and they creating a storyline so she can keep her job. But what I do know is it's some bullshit all the way around. And next week starts the reunions. Child, it's going to be a mess from the fights to the fashions. It's about to be a time. But that's it. That's all. And I ain't got no more. Thank you so much for coming down here listening to me and letting me get this off my chest. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the meantime, until next time, just like every time, I love you and I mean it. Bye.